Okay guys, I'm gonna try this, doing some actual video while I'm doing stuff here. Um, <clears throat> I got this side all set up. I'm pretty sure I'm not gonna be in frame. Not a big deal. Um, <clears throat> you can see I've got this mark here. That's where I wanna be. So most of the stuff is very, very simple. Um, you know, I have a full of here that you probably can't see off camera. Basically just gonna center punch that. This will not get you all the way through. Oh boy. Careful with this. Yes, I should have safety glasses on. In fact, I'm going to put them on right now. bottoms out it's not quite deep enough to cut all the way through which is actually in hindsight works out really good and actually works to the benefit of the project so I'm gonna go ahead and take the cut off wheel and just <coughs> see what's going on a little bit a little tiny bit okay that takes that little chunk out of there now because the diameter of the nut is bigger than the diameter of the rotor brooch it's not quite there it's real close but what's nice about that is you can kind of sneak up on it. So that's what we're going to do. Now being very careful, you don't want to use a new cutoff wheel. So you're not going to have enough room to get between here on this B pillar. Okay, I'm going to have to sneak up on it. trim it a little bit more. 
carefully cut the B pillar side. cleaned up to bare metal before I can put that in. This is actually a very, very simple, very simple procedure. And again, you know, should I have a backing plate? Uh, you know, I don't know. Who's to say? You know, my argument is, is any seatbelt better than no seatbelt? Well, that's kind of a duh. Um, is a shoulder belt better than a lap belt? I think so. Is this bit of effort worth it at this stage? Absolutely. So what I need to do next is basically just get um, bare metal um, to weld to. I'm going to try this. I didn't try this on the other side. I actually just used a wire wheel on a die grinder. Um, so let's see what this does. And therefore, <laughs> definitely have a helper with either a blow gun or some wet rags because this does get hot enough here where it makes the paint soft um, maybe I just had my heat cranked up too much I'm not sure but uh, if you don't want to wreck the paint it's always better to be on the side of caution so I have the nut already prepped I basically just took a roll out disc on the grinder and cleaned the coating or the chrome or the galvanizing whatever you want to call it basically just went ahead and got that cleaned up ahead of time now I'm gonna pop out of here go on the other side clamp it it's important that you use this kind of a clamp so the surface actually covers the nut otherwise you end up getting the nut all crooked in there the way it seems so I'm gonna pop around and do that and then we'll burn it in kind of sort of preset um, basically just pops in there like that you know semi centered you know this actually works out really well I always try to get as much surface area as possible you know I mean especially when I get enough weld how is that possible um, Take much tension to keep it in there. 
hardest part is getting wire feed down in there. I'm not a very strong welder to begin with, um, but it seems like on this type of a thing when I'm, you know, welding a nut, um, obviously pretty beefy stuff there. Um, I can crank my heat up a little bit better. My welds aren't pretty, but they do penetrate. And that's what it's all about, right? Penetration. So I did three on the other side. Um, I'm gonna do that again to at least get it tacked in there. Um, this welder is an El Cheapo, as you can see, but it served me pretty well. I'd love to replace it, but it's not in the budget. So we're gonna work with what we got. So I'm going to crawl back in the other side, throw my helmet on, and we'll burn it in. Yes? Yes, please.
first leg in there. Clean that out. I should have. Should have. Um, run a bolt in there. So I would avoid that issue. But I didn't. Pretty? Hell no. Do I think it'll survive? I do. I'll run an, a bolt through there, clean the threads up, and uh, call it good. Oops. Yeah, it looks kind of shitty. Let me uh, spin you around here. Hold on. Hold for shaky cam. Okay. Here's the driver's side looks quite a bit better um, but I did use a higher heat on that one all the way around um, so that's what we got going on all right let me zoom back out of here okay so that's it that's it that's all there is to it for the d-ring in my opinion now could I could have made a plate. Light here. This light sucks. Um, could have made a nut. Bear with me. I could have made a plate. You know, like a square plate. And welded the nut to that and then welded the whole plate in there and welded it here. That would have been another option. Um, but is the juice worth the squeeze 
I, I don't know. I really think this is going to be just fine. If I hit something hard enough where it pulls that out of the B pillar, I'm probably going to be toast anyways. So, um, I'm going to uh, throw the seat back in next and see what I can do about the uh, retractors. See if I can get them somehow to work. So, um, alright, turn it around here. Alright, thanks for watching. Uh, Hope that's helpful for anybody out there who's never done it before. This is the first time I've done it, um, but it makes sense to me. I said this is not a how-to. This is how I do. So, um, thanks for watching. Stay tuned. More to come.